Thank you. All right. We are talking about Fletcher class destroyers again. It is today actually is the 80th anniversary of the commissioning of the USS the Sullivans, which is the Fletcher class destroyer now on display at the Buffalo Naval Park in Buffalo, New York. Let's see. My name is Ken Stano with the YouTube channel History X, and you can check us out on historyxchannel.com. Thank you for watching. This is it's a special live crossover broadcast. We typically do these the second Wednesday of each month, Museum Ship Mafia. But today, like I said a few moments ago, the 80th anniversary of the con commissioning of the USS The Sullivans. So that's why we're on here uh, at this time and day, Saturday evening. So we've got four YouTube channels tonight, which is pretty cool. Normally we've got three, but uh, tonight it's four. Uh, we've got the uh, USS Slater's YouTube channel, of course, the YouTube channel of the Buffalo Naval Park. We've got History X. And tonight, because we've got Tim Nesmith on, the ship superintendent from the USS Kid, we've also got the YouTube channel for the USS Kid veterans it's veterans museum correct correct all right so let's see on with us tonight we've got uh let's see steven from the buffalo naval park uh tina smith the uh superintendent for the uss kid and behind the scenes last and definitely least is connor kilgore from <laughs> the <laughs> no it's always good to have connor on he is spinning the dials and pulling the levers monitoring the questions and comments and he is also the admin for the Museum Ships Facebook group, but uh, primarily he is with the Transportation Museum of Thunder Bay, the Canadian Coast Guard icebreaker, Alexander Henry. Did I get that right, Connor? Yep. All right. So like I always say, we can't do this without subscribers and viewers. So please submit your comments and questions. Let us know where you're from, what the temperature is, where you are, and where you're watching us. Are you watching us on the Slater, the kids' YouTube channel, maybe History X? Uh, or the Buffalo Naval Park. Uh, let's see. Let's get right into it. So we normally have Shane, and he might be joining uh, joining us in a little bit. But of course, yeah, we've got, what's that? He's slacking tonight. Yeah, that's all right. So, but we've got Stephen, and he's going to tell us about the basically what we're going to be talking about. Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong. Is the the Sullivans entry into the cold war correct sure if that's what yeah. we're talking about <laughs> let's see all right we just got a note from shane he said he's going to be on with us in about eight minutes um all right um yeah so i so today we actually had a, a little celebration i don't know if anybody watched it on our live stream we did live stream it um i left all the tripods in my uh, truck and I took my wife's car today, so I had to hold it with a shaky hand. So I do apologize about that. Um, but it was great. Um, we had a few people come up and talk. We had two Sullivan's uh, veterans that were there. They helped cut the cake. Uh, we had a big cake, birthday cake. Uh, I probably should have sent some pictures over to you, Ken, to put on there. Uh, well, but, like uh, I said, Shane, Shane sent me a few of the Sullivans, but these are from, from the history, not, not from anything that occurred today. Oh, I meant of like today's stuff that yeah. we did today. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, I, I mean, it's been a great celebration. We did the, we did a celebration in April as well, where we had Kelly Sullivan come down, um, and her daughter who reenacted the christening, uh, on the ship. And, uh, yeah. Well, looks like Michael was able to check it out um oh thanks mike yeah uh let's see so what um did i hear you say you actually had veterans on board yeah so we had two uh uss the sullivan's veterans on um as part of the ceremony today okay and they were the like so towards the end of the ceremony we did a cake cutting um and they helped cut the cake or you know like that first initial cut yeah, I'm gonna take it they were Cold War era veterans of. Um. Yeah, one was like uh, Korean, like around Korean War, and one was 61 to 63. Okay. I just remember one was in the 50s, and the other one specifically was, um, 64 to six. Uh, sorry, 61 to 63. Okay. 
So when these guys come on, do they recognize the ship possibly as it was when they were on board? Do they make comments like that? Yeah. Uh, in fact, I had somebody not too long ago and um, whoever was giving them the tour, they had, uh, they, they found their friend's locker and his name was like still not, you know, like somebody that he served with and his name was still on it or like something he wrote was still on it. So like, really? uh, yeah. So often we get people that come and be like, oh, I got to see if that's still there or if this, you know, a lot of the graffiti and stuff, especially, <laughs> I know we're talking about the Sullivan's, but especially on the little rock, like it's still there. So, mm -hmm. uh, people might like remember things like that. In fact, we did a video on that and I believe it was on the little rock where somebody had painted something down by the boilers and they want, we actually did like a little reconnaissance to see if it was there and it wasn't, but, um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, um, it's like they come back on and, and they remember, like it just hits them, you know, like they, they never left almost, but more often than not, that's the response that we get for sure. We uh, two uh, a couple weeks ago, we finally had Ryan Samansky on from the Battleship New Jersey, and he made the comment that every once in a while, and I guess this really bothers him, every once in a while, people will come on board and expect to see the ship in its World War II configuration. And the Sullivans, how would you describe the way it's set up right now? Yeah, she's like she's in her like uh, mid to late fifties era, so definitely more Korean War, Cold War era, but not not World War Two. Which I get it. Like she did have a lot of service, and and her her namesake obviously has the World War Two connection. So I understand that people might want to see that when they come in. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently, right now though, she is in her um, fifty six. I think Shane said fifty six. Okay. I could be, don't quote me on that. All right. Like Sam says 58 to 66. And he would definitely know um, more than um, I would, but yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's, he, I, he, uh, he built, I don't know if you guys know Lego history, Sam, I'm sure he's been introduced by Shane on the show, but he built like a Lego model of the Sullivan's, which was just mm -hmm. unbelievably awesome. So um, I would take his word for it. <laughs> Well, and I do think it's interesting. Ryan made this comment. And it's like, you know, a lot of people will come on board and, and get upset that they aren't seeing it in its World War II configuration. But if you were to do away with the way the ship was retired, you know, and to get it back to a World War II configuration, then you're then you're just screwing with all kinds of other history. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a great point, Ken, because like, you know, we look at um, World War II, but even Korea, like, the for, you know, it's called the Forgotten War. Um, and then she had some time during the Vietnam War. So what, um, you know, why, why would we disregard that? Yeah, and I can imagine these veterans that you had on today for the 80th uh, commissioning of the USS the Sullivans would have been a little upset if you did away with some of their history, you know, because you're watching them go around. It's like, well, I wonder if my friend's locker is still here and, and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I, I think that, you know, I don't think people, when they say they want to see in the world war two, I don't think they, they mean anything by it. Like, you know, or um, like in a negative way, but I, I think maybe sometimes we don't think of that world war two is like really um, we're in the process of where veterans are, are leaving us very quickly, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to honor them and and thank them and show them what we've done um, as much as we can before we lose them. So I think that that's why people love the World War II setting. Um, that's just kind of what I see from my job, uh, which is fine, which is great. I, I just want to be able to make sure that, you know, everybody feel, feels represented when they leave the, the Buffalo Naval Park. At sure. least for me, that's like a big thing. Yeah. Uh, do me a favor and give me your version of why the USS the Sullivans is called the USS the Sullivans. And the reason we're focusing on the Sullivans is that tonight is the 80th anniversary of the commissioning of the USS Sullivan. So do me a favor and just give a quick rundown of that history. Yeah, sure. So in uh, 1942, the five Sullivan brothers were on the USS, you know, uh, five brothers from Iowa, ranging in age from 20 to 28, I believe, 27 or 28, um, 
all five were on board the ship and she went down uh, for a torpedo is actually meant for the USS San Francisco. It went down so fast. It went down in about 20 seconds. Uh, nobody thought there were any survivors. There were actually a hundred left. One of which was, um, I believe it was George Sullivan. And, uh, basically everybody died. Unfortunately, uh, there were 10 survivors left of the, of the Sullivan, sh uh, sorry, the USS Juno ship, um, which is a very unfortunate story. It was something like seven or eight days after the, uh, the sinking that I think the, the final people were rescued. So it's like a really tragic story, um, not just for the Sullivan brothers, but for everybody and all the families that had people on that ship, um, especially that some of them could have survived, right? And, and didn't get that opportunity to. Uh, but um, so the USS the Sullivan's was actually supposed to be uh, another ship. Um, and the name escapes me I'm trying to see if I could see it real quick, but, uh, regardless, it was renamed the Sullivan's after the, uh, you know, the five brothers, uh, and, uh, wow. I'm like pausing here. All right. right so it was named after the, sorry, it was named after the five brothers, um, Alita and, uh, Tom were their parents. They would go around and, and do uh, different things for war bonds. They had a sister, Genevieve, and they really kind of kept the uh, the spirit of the Sullivan brothers alive. Um, they, you know, they really could have kind of just went into seclusion or say, we don't want anything to do with it, but they didn't. They were very, um, you know, involved in the Navy after that. And then it, it was great because Albert, who was the youngest, had uh, a son, James, uh, and James had two kids, uh, John and Kelly, and they're still involved very much with not only our Sullivan's, but um, DDG 68. And uh, they really, um, you know, keep the spirit of the Sullivan brothers alive. So mm -hmm. Kelly comes here all the time. We've been, uh, Shane and myself have been down to Waterloo, Iowa uh, to visit the Grout Museum. Um, we visited Kelly. We visited some other people down there that are like kind of like historians on the subject. It's very popular. I know that Albert's son, um, James, is still with us too, so which is great. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, basic story. There you yeah. go, the Putnam. Thank you. Is that what it was? It was originally okay. going to be the USS Putnam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's see. It's a it's a shame uh, that uh, Shane couldn't join us tonight. But uh, we got Stephen Tedesco from the Buffalo Naval Park, and he's uh, giving us a little bit of the background. Um, let's see. Well, I, okay. I suppose we could bring them on. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, uh, we knew Shane was going to be a little late because where were you? <laughs> where were you? Huh? Oh, am I on? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I was, I was actually the speaker for the CLG five USS Oklahoma city and SSN 723 uh reunion closing dinner this evening so mm -hmm. that's where i was sorry guys. so you all right so are you, are you uh, gonna put me on screen or not or uh, you are on screen you are, you are on screen. screen yeah oh really here yeah do you, do you want a bigger picture how about that <laughs> you know Let's my internet has been okay. slow no my internet yeah. has been slow yeah you're I'm sorry it great. says add okay good but I'm sorry. Yeah, it's still like in the corner. I'm blacked out. You know, it says add to stage or not. So I did. I see the four of you and then the Sullivans, but I don't. OK, that's that's helpful. I just didn't know I was on. Thank you. Yeah. No, uh, you're, so you're totally how's on. it going, everyone? You're totally oh. on. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if you can see we've got the Tim. We've got Connor Stevens here. Yeah. John has. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Someone was asking, where's John Epp? John Epp. He was on before we went live. We knew he was going to do this, but apparently he says he's uh, dealing with some bronchitis, so he didn't want to uh, ruin our gathering tonight. So he's watching. You can say hi, John Up, if you want, but he is behind the scenes and uh, didn't want to come on, which is no big deal. Um, yeah, yeah, no. Hi, John. <laughs> All right, so I've got, I've got Shane. I've got the pictures on that uh, you uh, sent. So, um, what? What did you want to uh, tell us tonight about the uh, the Sullivans? Yeah, I mean, the picture, again, I'm sorry. I might be a little laggy here, but the picture that I have, oh, page unresponsive. Um, 
Okay, the picture that I just saw was the 1945 graded system, graded camouflage that I just saw. Uh, that is very similar to the kid because we were both refit in 45 towards the end of the war. And uh, that's when they... Oh, the wait, first wait, a thing second, they, wait a second. So you're, you're talking about this picture here. Yeah, sorry which is, guys, I'm really, I'm really lagging here. Uh, okay, well that, that's all right. Your your audio is right on, but okay. I think I that's think the measure I've, twenty-two. I think I've got where is that? I've got a picture. So and this is the yeah. kid. Yes. Uh, before before the repainting, uh, uh, Tim, I apologize. So, that's okay. Yeah. So that that's that's what you're referring to, Shane, of the similar um, the similar schemes, correct? Yes. Now, I the, your picture. If you just put the picture of the kid up, I I am not seeing that right now. So that yeah, might be all right. How much I'm lagging, but that's okay. So the yeah that that 45 we were talking uh, you know about post war refits. That 45 is where uh, they removed the Mark 14 quintuple uh, between this the forward Mark 14 quintuple torpedo tubes and then added the quad bofors. So that was the major again, as Tim and I had discussed. You know, the anti-aircraft threat uh, didn't know, you know, really where was ending. Of course, there was some talk about them going, having to invade the Japanese home islands. And uh, we were probably preparing to go back. And uh, so to add the quads and take off one of the quintuple torpedoes, that was one of the major refits. And then, of course, the Measure 22 graded system as well. Uh, but... I'm sorry, guys. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm sorry I'm late, but uh, Tim, did you kind of talk about your visit here, or no, no? Uh, uh, Stephen was talking about the uh, Sullivan brothers. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. very good. Yes, yeah, and, and the picture the picture I've got up right now, I think, is where you're talking about. So, what you're saying is that they removed one of the torpedo racks and between the set. With... <laughs> okay. Yes, and uh, I just saw John App. I'm eating dinner too, or something. So, oh. <laughs> hi Hulk Hogan's tights. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So between the forward stacks, that uh, Mark 14 quintuple was removed. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we. I hope we do get to Tim's visit to the Naval Park. That was a fascinating thing, and we've uploaded two part a two part video that a lot of people have watched so far. So that's great. But. Um, yeah, that was just one of the refits that, um, you know, that the Sullivans had over the course of her career. And one of the other pictures that you gave me, it looked like it was of the one of the, the mess areas um, with some bunks. On oh, the yeah. Side. Yeah, I've got that, I've got that uh, image up here as well. What did you want to say about that? Well, that was that was the it's so interesting now because those are just displays uh in the mess decks but we like to talk about and tim and i talked about it that there was actual bunking in the mess decks and that picture is from about 58. uh that's okay. one of the very few pictures we have of the interior of the ship during service and i think tim can correct me if i'm wrong but he also said that's kind of the same way with kid you know pictures were not were you know, people would sneak pictures here and there where they could, but uh, so that gives a really nice look at the tables, uh, the uh, the different tables than we have now. So at some point from 58 to 65, they even just changed the tables where the crew would eat. And then, of course, those bunk, uh, the pipe racking along the port and starboard side as well, leading then uh, closer to the diesel generator and just aft of the mess deck, too, which is pretty exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. That looks yeah, so very similar to Kid right now. This this, uh, this picture that we have up right now. Yes. Okay. So yeah, Tim. Uh, so you were at the the, uh, the Buffalo Naval Park after the Hinsa conference, correct? Correct. Correct. So, so last leg of a very long tour through New England. <laughs> so uh, was that the first time you were at the Buffalo Naval Park? First time ever, and uh, it was not a disappointment. It was great. Uh, Shane spent almost the entire day walking around. I did not get to go around Little Rock that much, but uh, got to see Croker, got to see uh, Sullivan's, and uh, very informative. It's it's interesting. Kid was the very first ship I ever went on, and mm. so 
I really never saw too many Cold War ships. Bama, just down the coast from us, is is also in World War II configuration. Um, Texas, of course, World War II configuration. So uh, to see Cold War era ships, I have to really go across the country. And uh, to, this was the first time I've ever been on another Fletcher, going to see Cass and Young uh, on that Saturday, and then on Monday going to see Sullivan. So. Uh, I have seen all but one of the Fletchers now. I have to go to Greece if I'm going to see the other one. <laughs> That's all go. Yeah, I, I think we should. Yeah, uh, Stephen, did you? Oh, there you go. I like that. St Stephen, <laughs> did you talk about the celebration today or anything? Or Yeah, I briefly talked about what we did. And, yeah. um, you know, that there were two Sullivan uh, veterans that came and helped us out during the uh, ceremony. So I know one was 61 to 63. Do you remember what the other, what years the other guy served? Yeah, he was 59, uh, 56 to 59. So okay. that was, uh, that photo of the mess deck, that was, would be right when he was on, on board, which is a fabulous, um, which is a fabulous thing. Uh, the, uh, so every, you know, I've been really pondering this, and it's taken me about five years to do this, I guess, since I started the Naval Park. But uh, picking a year of service, picking a year of service is so important to telling the story, the historical fabric, what you're adding, uh, what potentially you're removing. Uh, and I'm really honing in on 1956 or 1958 for the Sullivans. Uh or 1961, because we do have those Mark 32 triple torpedo tubes that were added in 61, so I don't want to get rid of those. So I might even push it to 1961 as her service, and I've been hemming and hawing. Uh, did we lose him? Did he just yeah. mute? Like he, looks like he muted his mic. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can unmute it. Uh, I think you muted your mic, Shane. I didn't mean to. Oh, I didn't there, touch him. There. there you are. Yeah, you are. You're good. You're back okay, on. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> as uh, so, I don't know where I was. I'm sorry again, guys. Uh, but he did it wait. again. Oh wait, are 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 we doing that or is I, he I, doing I that? didn't I didn't touch it. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. Shane, we, we can't hear you. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can fix this. Nope. Oh, let me try. Uh oh. He's pulling well, out here, his hair. I don't I don't know if it's I don't know if it's on our end, but um it, I'm not I can't unmute him. What what the heck? Yeah, Shane, I can't I can't try, either. Try leaving and rejoining. Huh? Hold on. Oh. Oh, there, there he goes. Oh, wait. There you are. Yeah, we got gotcha. you. Oh, man. Sorry about this, everybody. Uh, don't worry. Um, it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, and Stephen can attest, our internet, you know, I don't live far from work. Our internet has been going really shabbily over the past few days, and it's been affecting me here at home. So, uh, mm -hmm. again, apologies. But so... I don't know if you heard 1956, 58, maybe even push it to 61 because we got the Mark 32 triple torpedoes, ASW torpedoes there uh, that I do, do, do not want to remove. And I think a lot of there's some struggle because that diminishes, doesn't take it away, but that diminishes uh, World War II service a little bit, right? And you Yo, have to then focus you, on. Before you came in, Sean, we, uh, Sean, Shane, I don't know why I called you Sean. You called your coworker uh, Sean? I know. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I am so out of it tonight. Okay. So um, I'm glad, we I'm actually, glad no one's watching tonight. I'm glad it's just us to just like go back and forth. Yeah. No it's, a dry run. Run. it's a dry run. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We, we were actually talking about that, Shane, you know, like about people, um, questioning or wondering why it wouldn't be like a world war ii fit and i mean to be like 61 you said i think is a great time because now you're talking about when she goes down to guantanamo bay right in the caribbean so mm -hmm. i mean that's a story that maybe isn't told at every naval museum that that we can focus Correct. on 
Yeah, absolutely. And there are other, you know, World War II was 20 months and her service was 23 years, right? Or 22 years. Uh Uh, So, and Tim, I know that you and I talked about this. Do you want to tell a little bit about like your stories of, of the kid and choosing 45? But then I think you and I talked about that if you were to choose a different year, yeah, you kind of have to minimize the World War II history and stuff. <clears throat> well, nice, yeah, like one of the one of the reasons that it would kind of be difficult for you guys to go back to World War II is those three inch fifties, as we observed in the video when we were walking around. Those three inch fifties required a build out uh, away from the 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 original deck house and more like shoring up of the platform that they sit on and an extension of it. So for you to go backwards, you're going to have to like chop a lot of the, of the superstructure of the ship. And when you start, start doing that, you're, you're, you're getting into some stuff with, you know, displacement, uh, you know, changing your draft, all of that. And it, it gets tricky. So for you guys to stay in a cold war era. I mean, that's, that's honestly perfect. That's where that's, it's hard to walk backwards when you've got to structurally change the ship for kid. They didn't do that. They just pulled stuff off of her and never put the heavier weaponry on, didn't put the tripod mast, none of that. So when she came to Baton Rouge in 82 and, and the group that was here looked at her and they're talking with Rizzuto, it was an easy fix to say, let's aim for world war two. Nobody's been able to do it because you have to train, change the structure of the ship so much with this it's plug and play, pull off those hedgehogs, put on 20, uh, 40 millimeters, twin 40 millimeters, um, find a set of torpedo tubes, find quad forties. It was just finding the equipment and putting it back on. So it, it was not as much of a, a structural issue. So uh, I, I think staying in the Cold War rig for you guys is perfect because you're representing an era like we were saying earlier. Everybody talks about World War II, but, you know, the guys in the Cold War served and they ask, actually did something the World War II generation didn't do. They had daily to live up to the fact that I may be incinerated at any moment with an atomic bomb. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you guys represent a vital area there. Very eloquently put, Tim. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, do you have, uh, you, do you want to, is there anything that you want to mention about that, that we've talked about? I mean, and then we have to do it for two other vessels too, right? So, you know, it's one of those things that we have to pick a year of service for the little and the croaker and all have been configured, right? All of them have major, it would be like saying, you know, take the little, the, take the USS Little Rock back to World War II. Of, we just, you know, the, the, the superstructure is totally, uh, you know, the to- superstructure is ripped off. The Cleveland class is Im- impossible to do. So focusing on uh, the Cold War atomic era is the way to do it. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's you always see Vietnam veteran hats and, and World War II veteran hats. You don't necessarily see Korean War veteran hats, but you definitely don't see like Cold War era hats. Or anything like that, which which kind of just the story doesn't get talked about as much. And like the fact that you know Tim had a great point. Not only could they be incinerated at any moment, so could the Eastern Seaboard or or anywhere else that that we were under this constant threat. Um, that was legitimate. It was a legitimate threat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey Shane, yeah. one of the pictures that you uh, provided was actually. It looked like some blueprints or some schematics of the aft. Um, uh, what what uh, what was that about? Yeah, that is again. I'm sorry if you're pulling it up. I I still have the graded system 1945 image on my computer. So okay. I'm sorry if if that's been taken down or so. That's one of the things you know. I'm walking around with Tim. Uh, and he walks into the aft deck house, the, the main crew uh, head, and there's a hoist right there, <laughs> you know, and he it's right in front of the, one of the showers. And he says, well, that's got to be a little tough for someone coming out of that shower. You got this huge <laughs> metallic hoist about one, you know, six inches away from where you want to step out. And that, so what that was, was I did a comparison of the inboard profile. And that's from a book called Anatomy of the Ship. 
and it was it was the book was published speci specifically about uh, the Sullivans. Now there is a regular Fletcher class destroyer book, Anatomy of the Ship, uh, different authors, uh, but. Uh, this one was specifically about the Sullivans, and it does show inboard profiles, uh, not as in-depth as I would have liked, because it would have been beautiful to see the 43, 45, and then he covers 59 as the last inboard profile. And uh, so that shows uh, when they removed Mount 53, they actually had to move the hoist a little bit. So instead of it moving much more at an angled uh, from down below, uh, forward to Mount 53, they actually shoved it a little upwards, all right, maybe more like an uptake uh, for a stack. And uh, it has, it it curved, it hit the main deck closer than the original five-inch hoist, and that was one of those changes. And you can see that in those two drawings that they just take um, Mount 53 five-inch hoist and just shift it more directly in line with the actual handling room and imagine what they had to do cutting uh probably decks uh you, you know not moving doors or anything like that but certainly moving the <clears throat> angle of, of where it comes through uh the second platform first first platform and then through the main deck so yeah, that was interesting to hear Tim's walk into the head and say, oh, you have a hoist right in the middle of the head. There's the sinks, there's the showers. It was fun. So that's what that represents. I noticed that didn't make the video, so that's probably because of all the expletives I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Yes, yeah, Stephen and I worked. It was a long video, and I'm happy to do it. But, I mean, we got about uh, 40 minutes of stuff between the two parts there, so that, that was good. But... Yeah, so that's what that is about. Again, I don't even know if you're showing it because I still have the graded system on my screen, the 1945 picture. No, yeah. So we've got that schematic up. It's in it's in black and white. And okay, and good. so yeah, your your description kind of coincided with with what I had up on the screen. Uh, so then, what do you guys have? Uh, do you have anything else that you're going to be either celebrating or or reviewing? this weekend for the 80th anniversary of the commission of the USS O'Sullivan's? Steven? No. Oh. I mean, I don't personally. So, yeah, so what, you did, what you did today was the extent of, of the 80th anniversary. Actually, I should, I should rephrase that. So maybe not this weekend, but um, November 13th, I'll be doing like a, a student lecture on the battle of Guadalcanal. So, um, you know, trying to really focus our lectures and educational series on things very significant to the park. And that's something that is ultimately one of the most significant things to the history of USS the Sullivan. So mm -hmm. um, not to plug my own event, but. Well, no, let's, I mean, we can definitely get into that. I mean, for those of you that aren't familiar, you can definitely check out the Buffalo and Erie County Naval and Military Park on YouTube. And, you know, they talked about some of the videos that have recently been posted, especially with Tim Nesmith from the USS Kid visiting. So if you haven't already, check out the Buffalo Naval Park on YouTube. Sim simply go into the search bar and type in um, Buffalo Naval Park and their videos will come right up. And you can also check out their website, buffalo naval park.org. Um, so yeah, and and so what do you we might as well just jump into it. So what do you guys have coming up since now it's technically fall? How do you close out the season? Who starts? Well, uh since I've got Buffalo Naval Park, let's uh Shane and Steven. So how do you guys close out the season? Uh so we're gonna go through straight till Thanksgiving, pretty much. Uh we close the weekend right before Thanksgiving. We have a, I guess, I mean, the last big event that I have for the year is we do trick-or-treating on the ships. It's called Ship or Treat. And uh, Shane and I are putting together uh, a curation of Twilight Zone episodes to watch the night of that uh, Ship or Treat event. Very cool. Very cool. Are, are, you, are, you, are you guys actually doing the, uh, the Twilight episode that was filmed on... The Edson? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of them. Really? I think yeah, you said what? Gonna, Shane, uh, you had like six, six to eight episodes that we were going to do. 
Yeah, and I started watching them this week. Uh, you know, there I think there's 12 wartime episodes or uh, episodes that deal with uh, war or combat in some way. And But we can't watch all 12. So I'm kind of picking, I'm watching all of them and I'm going to pick uh, two, you know, maybe two, maybe we could have three or four because they're about, they're half an hour each. So two hours, maybe four episodes. Uh, so yeah, that has Sounds to be good. one of them. The uh, uh, 30 fathom grave. Uh, that's what it's called. The 30 fathom grave, I believe is the one with the Edson um, looking at uh, judgment night, uh, which is the U boat captain who has to live the nightmare of a ship that he sank. So he's on a British freighter in a convoy and he has to relive that night after night of the horror of that's of the ship sinking uh the purple testament uh is a good one um how about talking tina (laughs) (laughs) my name's tina Uh, (laughs) but uh honestly i mean today was today was a great day uh i'm sure steven covered it but uh i mean we had a chief's pinning ceremony. We had the the Oklahoma City guys on board. We had our celebration. It was it was a lot of stuff uh, that was going on, and it was a really busy day down uh, down at the waterfront. It was a nice day, so yeah, I think it uh, things begin to slow down. Oh, I finally see the schematic of the ship. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's from like twenty minutes ago. Jeez. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, we lost them. Uh oh. So- so when you did when you when you were doing this uh, lecture for the Oklahoma City guys, that was on the we lost him. He's on. Lost him. Oh, holy crap! You're right. We did lose him. All right. Well, I can, just, right. I can answer for him and make up stuff. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So where where was he, where was he doing that lecture? Um. So they were there this morning on the USS Little Rock, but then he did the keynote address tonight at their at their dinner which was at the hyatt or a hotel in the area okay so it wasn't on board and no. uh let's see so here i wanted to pull up a question this is probably for either you know before we get to the kid this will this this question will either be for tim or steven eric asked if there was a book of uh plans of the fletchers in P- pdf available for download somewhere do you either got either you guys know the answer to that question yeah, actually, I answered him in the chat. Uh, oh, you did? You can, yeah, you can contact 10 Can Sailors Incorporated over in Somerset, Massachusetts, and they can sell you a DVD with them. Excellent. Yeah, it looks like uh, Connor pulled that answer up. Thanks, Connor. Uh, appreciate oh, that. Shane's back. Do we? Uh, I suppose. How's your internet now? It's just bad. I don't know. It's been bad for multiple days now, guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, <clears throat> so oh, that's all right. I'm going to plug through. Uh, if I keep on freezing, I'm not going to back out like John App used to do, or, <laughs> you know, I'm going to plug through and uh, you'll, well, I'm sorry. You'll just have to deal with me. Uh-huh. Well, before, before we switch over to uh, uh, Tim and what he's got going, going on at the kid, obviously, you know, we heard from Steven what what's left for the season from, from your side chain. Um, yes. I'm beginning to, uh, with the announcement that the 2025 Hinza uh, Symposium will be in Buffalo, I have begun to put together a three-year plan uh, for uh, displays on board or historical fabric back on board. And uh, I'll be meeting with uh, a few other players, uh, Paul, our president, Bill, and Brendan, Uh, and laying out a multi-year plan to present the ships in the best light. So I've developed about uh, 32 projects maybe over the next two and a half years or, you know, two years roughly. And uh, slowly and surely, uh, uh, scope of work, financials, and start opening and bringing back spaces uh, and preserving and restoring them and then building in the historical fabric. So it's very exciting uh, time, I, I, I can, we just cannot say if the Sullivans will be there at that time. I, I do not know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, she might be. Well, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. So yes, next sir. year, the yes. Historic Naval Ships Association is going to be in San Diego, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, Midway. And then the following year, for twenty-five, it's going to be at the Buffalo Naval Park. 
Yeah, that's correct. See, I, I didn't know that. Well, that's that's pretty cool. But but to your point, if things go well, the 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 Sullivans will be in dry dock and possibly not be available for the conference. Well, if things go well, they'll be back before that. So. Well, good point. I guess, yeah, I guess that's a good way of looking at it. But I mean, I hey, if if it misses the conference because it's in dry dock, I don't care. That's just that's just good news. Yeah, ultimately, I think that would be good news. Um, mm -hmm. I see Michael Phillips' comment was highlighted. I love that. Uh, you have to figure out where you got it uh, and then donate it. <laughs> then <laughs> donate those blueprints, Michael. So uh, figure it out where you got them and then donate them. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're shooting for 2024 for her dry dock, but we just don't know uh, where it goes, you know, that the, or where that where it goes from here we just can't be too sure as of right now yeah. if it's 24 25 or something but it's a very exciting time and we have obviously as as tim sees and and connor was there with his dad uh, uh on friday after the conference we have yeah. a wide variety of uh, artifacts you know uh you know we, it's not just navy it's air force and army and marines and with all of our memorial gardens. So we have a, a very wide, diverse uh, set of artifacts. And then it's just the resources to uh, make sure they're in the best light. Mm -hmm. Anything it's else? Saying, you guys... wanna... Oh, go ahead, Tim. I want to touch on what you just said about the memorial gardens. Uh, we wrapped up filming and I mentioned, you know, if Shane, if Shane's going to have a life, we have to leave. And <laughs> uh, we walked off the ships, locked it up, said goodbye, shook hands, you know, wished each other well. He went to get in his car. I stuck around to take a few pictures because I hadn't had a chance to go through the gardens. And Shane, I spent a good 30 to 45 minutes walking through those gardens, taking photographs and everything. They are beautiful. Uh, I've been to museums. I've been to parks to where they have a lot of stuff in them. And it's it gets to look junky after a while and you guys have done a fabulous job of making having a lot of stuff there but it's landscaped you were telling me about the local garden club that comes in and does all the landscaping for you and everything and it is beautiful it is i can't say enough good things about it i you know i took more pictures i think in the gardens than i actually did on the ships <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty impressive. I mean, I've, I've been there and you can kind of see in this picture, first of all, you've got the three ships, you've got the Little Rock, you've got the Sullivans uh, just down below. And then, of course, the USS uh, Croker to the right. But then below all that in this photo, like you said, you know, the gardens and it, it's it's a pretty nice setup that they've that they've got there. And yeah, it, it kind of gets overlooked unfortunately from you know from time to time but it is a major part of the visit at least i think it should be mm -hmm. yeah i agree i was very impressed mm -hmm. the um you know we also have the ptf boat there <laughs> yeah. too which is something that often gets overlooked because you know we have these three big vessels and even i myself am constantly reminded hey we have four not three because i'll always say three as well but you know you mentioned things being overlooked like that's definitely one of them too which is kind of a, you could see it in the picture is kind of the start to the gardens as well. Um, yeah. I wonder, I wonder if I have a, well here, uh, why don't we switch over to uh, Tim? What do you guys have uh, coming up? Well, you don't shut down. The thing we don't about have a season, that's all year long. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, why don't you mention what's, uh, what's coming up for the USS, the uh, uh, USS kid? Uh, well, right now, uh, all, all sites are set on dry dock. Um, the state, uh, appropriated, uh, 10 point something million. I forget. I'm not good with numbers, um, to, to go, of course, you know, money in hand hasn't happened, but, uh, but it, I, the way government works, you know, it's never going to be in our hand. We just hand them the bills. So, uh, so Everything at this point is getting ready uh, to get her out of the cradle and when the river comes up and take her downstream, the bureaucratic process flows slowly. So, you know, we're uh, we're getting to the point to where we're hopefully able to talk with shipyards and and then you know make a decision from there about where we'll go. 
Um, but in the meantime, we had some volunteers here back earlier in the year uh, from a nuclear engineering group. And one of them uh, was really interested in the ship. And I pitched him and said, hey, why don't you come with me? Uh, I need some electrical work checked out. And we took him down into the bosun's locker and I said, take a look at the anchor windlass system because I want to know if I can energize it, put the, you know, put it into gear and drop an anchor or raise an anchor. Cause it hasn't been done since, you know, 82 when they anchored her out in the, in the uh, river before the cradle was ready. And uh, we're going to need that if we're getting out and the shipyard's not ready for us, we've got to drop anchor somewhere. So uh, he was here yesterday, looked it over and all signs are good that we might be able to uh, energize that real soon. Um, getting just that that would be pretty that would be pretty great i mean is the idea yeah. uh is the idea that you're literally going to drop an anchor and then uh winch it back up or would you drop it slowly oh we'd probably drop it slowly i'm sure oh no i'd, I'd want to see with, it with a tugboat drop it. yeah i mean it's not going to be battleship with the missouri cutting the anchor chain you know oh. but uh but because, uh, you know, the Mississippi River does have pipelines going under it. So we got to be careful where we drop it. But oh, um, all right, one of the one of the things I've wanted to do uh, since before we even started talking about dry docking, I watched Slater's uh, dry dock presentation at Hensa 14 in Norfolk. And they had their windlass working, still have their windlass working. Um, and they lowered their anchor in dry dock and played all the chain out, disconnected it from the ship, went ahead and lowered it on down to the deck of the dry dock, blasted and painted the anchors and the chains. And then the, the big thing for me was they got into the chain locker and looked at where all the salt residue had done deterioration to the bulkheads and the decks of that locker and then made repairs, painted, you know, fixed it up, reattached brought it all back in. And I remember that had been my first Hensa in, in well over a decade. And I remember looking around the room and there were a lot of people going, oh, I never thought of that. And Rizzuto and Zakowski had a lot of people picking their brain after that session. So nobody has looked in the chain locker at, aboard KID until last December when we got a bunch of kids with an Eagle Scout project to bring out probably about 2,500 feet of rope, if I remember, of line, two inch line that had been just coiled up forever down there. Uh, and we popped it open. I looked inside and took a picture and sent it to Tim and, and uh, said, you know, when's the last time you saw, you saw the chain and the chain locker? And his response was, I don't think I ever saw it. So that's, somebody may not have seen it since, since the ship was, was moored out in the river in early 82 before he got here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that, do you have, um, have you guys posted pictures of that on your Facebook group or anything like that? Yeah. If you, uh, if you go on fa our Facebook page and hit the search function and put in chain locker, you'll see you know, the kids hauling the line. Cause it was all so a solid piece of line. It was ob very obviously a mooring line, but just to be able to handle it, we, we had to get multiple scouts. So I'm pulling it out of the locker, pushing it up one level, bringing it through the bosun's locker, up the forward deck hatch ladder, and then coiling it on the main deck. And the rope was so old, we were like, we can't use it for mooring anymore because we, we just can't trust it. So uh, they had bolt cutters and they sheared through the rope and cut it into like 150 foot sections that maybe we could use for something else. It's not so, no, you know, not so... Um, dependent you know we got to make sure it doesn't separate as as more in the ship but we yeah. can use it for other stuff but yeah you can see those kids doing all that hard work and then the pictures of the chain and the chain locker yeah i i remember you showing me those uh pictures at the conference last week tim i think that was before they went up went live and i just and i the second i saw your chain locker i went oh shoot when was the last yeah. time it was in ours <laughs> That was uh, everybody's reaction in the room when Rizzuto and Zakowski showed those pictures in 14. So mm -hmm. you don't think about it because it's down in, in the interior of the ship and right. nobody ever sees it. There's one entrance. It's not where the public goes. You know, we're all focused on making sure it's safe and presentable for the public. But there's areas in the ships yeah. that 
nobody only, ever sees because it's crawl spaces. Yeah, the only museum ship I've ever seen that has its chain locker on display is the LST-393 in Muskegon. Uh, mm. they, they have their chain locker on the port side accessible to the public. But wow. yeah, like, I, you never think of it otherwise. Yeah. Uh, for the for the Sol I'm sorry guys, I again I'm getting cut out. But uh, for the Sullivans, when prior to her sinking in April of last year, our chain locker and bosun locker near you know moving towards the peak uh, was at least the door was open that people could look at. Uh, they couldn't go in there, but they were able to at least look into the anchor windlass. Uh, not the chain locker per se, but the anchor windlass leading forward through the stores. The medical stores were up there, and uh, that was available to be viewed on the tour route. Hmm. Neat. Yeah, when I when I was there, I don't know if I saw that or not. Um, at least I don't remember seeing that. Uh, did we take you to the anchor windlass on Little Rock? Because that's my dirtiest job for you, man. Oh yeah. No, no, I I definitely missed that. Um, okay. but yeah, so something, yeah, that seeing something like that would be pretty neat. Uh, if, if, uh, you want to check out those photos, uh, definitely go to the, well, to check out the USS kid veterans museum, their Facebook page. Oh, you, one. What's that? Nothing. Oh, okay. So, uh, but, uh, Tim, you were saying that's on the, the USS kid veterans museums, Facebook page. Facebook page and probably Instagram as well. Yeah. Okay. And additionally, you can check out the USS Kid Veterans Museum at USSKid.com. If you want to support them in any way, check out their website, USSKid.com and the Facebook page. And of course, search for their YouTube videos on YouTube. Simply go to the search bar and enter USS Kid Veterans Museum and it'll come right up. Um, anything we'll be else? Splashing Ryan Szymanski tomorrow night at this time. That's coming up tomorrow evening. That's tomorrow evening. He's on a high seas history. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. Anything else you wanted to add before we move on to Connor? Uh, I just want to thank uh, Shane for uh, take, spending the day and taking me around and letting me do that research because his Mestec Ladder Well and uh, Cass and Young's Mestec Ladder Well, very informative for what we've got to do to rip out our dumb waiter and restore the stewards' uh, berthing. Uh, back to World War II era. Uh, that, that helps quite a bit. And, and uh, do you want me to talk about you, Ken, right now, or you want to do it a little bit later? <laughs> um, well, all right, real quick, before we move on to Connor, go ahead. All right, so because of this series uh, for the 80th anniversary for the Fletchers that uh, Ken has been hosting and, and moderating for us, uh, we had the opportunity to nominate him for an award with the Louisiana Association of Museums. And wow. uh, LAM uh, has an award called the Media Support Award. And as a result, it's for somebody who is able to, uh, through their various media, radio, TV, internet, uh, is able to significantly help a Louisiana museum. And because of this series, we decided that Ken should be nominated. We put in the nomination and Lamb agreed with us. So Mr. Wow. Ken Stout of <laughs> History X is the 2023 Media Support Award recipient for the Louisiana Isn't Association. Isn't that Media. fabulous? Well done, yes. well done. Yeah, I, I, when Tib told me about this, I was uh, really surprised because I never, when I started the YouTube channel, History X, I never thought anything like that would come about. I mean, you know, to get recognized. So when you guys, actually, it all started, if you think about it, it all started with uh, Shane and Steven with the uh, 20 hundred watch for the Buffalo Naval Park. It was their idea to <coughs> really put something like this together when they said, hey, well, sh we should get John up. Uh, to join us and I don't know maybe that uh, that history X guy can you know to join us and uh, you know create you know, a, put Ken, it together Ken you have definitely brought it to a place we never thought we could so definitely <laughs> yeah. take 
take the credit. <laughs> you deserve yeah, it. Well, I, I will definitely take the credit and say thank you, definitely. But if it wasn't for Shane and Steven having the idea and then say, hey, we should have that History X guy. Well, as soon as you guys said that, it's like, yeah, I'll figure this out. I will uh, totally figure out how we can get all of us uh, on YouTube together. And that's what this is kind of turned into. So I'm thrilled and I definitely appreciate Tim nominating me for the award and definitely thank you. Uh, you know, wow. great job, I, Tim. I, yeah, well, I, I don't I don't want to appear unappreciative, so uh, I done. definitely appreciate it and pretty cool. <laughs> so so thank you, Tim, for doing that. And You're thanks to well. all of our I'll get it yeah. out to you. And thanks for to all of our fans. I mean, there's people saying congratulations, congratulations, you know. So this can't right. be done without people watching our program, you know, which is uh it's it's a testament to that we're kind of goofy we're kind of knowledgeable you know so yeah it's it's congratulations well done to tim for thinking of it you and parks and then of course ken for actually being awarded that that's wonderful yeah and in in the same breath uh as i understand it uh shane got uh or received some type of award from the hinsa yes. is that is that true he did so what yeah, was that <laughs> The biggest goofball got, award, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, Hinza's 2023 Sexiest Man Alive Award. Oh, well, hello. Yes. <coughs> oh, wait. <laughs> it's new ca oh. new category. I thought I thought you guys were being serious that Shane got an award. <laughs> no, oh, he, he did. did. He got, he yeah, got he the did. Curator Award. He did get the Curator Award. All right, well, then let's take that seriously. Because if you think about it, this whole museum ship mafia for me, it's like herding cats because you've got um, you've got John, Curator. You've got Stephen, Curator. You've got Connor now, Curator. Stephen is the Educational Director, so technically not, you know, not a Curator. But to get all these guys together, it's it's it can be tricky sometimes. So you, congratulations, Shane. A curator Award for 2023, correct? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was, I share it with, um, they gave it out, uh, they gave two awards this year, one to Frank at the USS Missouri. He did a lot of work. They were, they spent uh, all of 22 and most of 23 uh, bringing the collections off of the USS Missouri into a building they had reconstructed, or I'm sorry, had built for about $4 million, I believe he said. And so it's managing the collections, taking them off of a ship. Even if it's a battleship, it's still a ship. And, uh, and then for me, for the work that uh, I did uh, for the uh, collections when the Sullivan sank. So, Gotcha. Well, congratulations. I mean, that was a lot Thank of you. work. And you, you uh, in order when this, you know, to get the um, collections secured when the Sullivans took on water, um, that was not a small job. So no. if anyone deserved, uh, you know, that kind of recognition, uh, you definitely did. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And I learned more about Shane last Monday than, than in all the years that I've known him since what, 2018. And yeah. I can tell you, he's got a passion for his collection mm -hmm. and you can see it just from what he was describing earlier. He's mapping stuff out years in advance as far as exhibits. So well-deserved there as well. Thank you, yeah. Tim. Nice. Definitely. Uh, well, let's uh, before we move on to uh, Connor at the um, Alexander Henry, I want to at least mention, um, you know, he's not on tonight, you know, because of uh, bronchitis. But for those of you that wanted to check out the USS Slater's uh, YouTube channel, simply search for the USS Slater in the search bar, and you'll come up with all of their videos. John Epp, who is the curator of the USS Slater, you know, his uh, bronchitis, he just didn't want to join us tonight, but uh, normally he's on with us. And you can also check out the USS Slater uh, website at ussslater.org. So definitely check them out and check out the content that they put out there. Just John couldn't be on with us tonight. So, and with that being said, let's move on to the Alexander Henry. So, Connor, what's the story over there? Uh, well, firstly, I'd just like to point out that if you search up the photographs from the award ceremony at Hinza, uh, Shane is wearing an absolutely lovely Alexander Henry hat in his uh, photos. 
um, which I had given him, and I tried my best to get rid. I mean, give out these hats. Um, but uh, to answer your question about what's going on, in the Henry, uh, our regular season has come to an end as of the twenty fourth. Uh, so we're no longer open to the general public. Uh, just waiting for Google Max, Maps to update that. But what we're doing now is our event called Haunted Harbor, where we partner with an organization called Our Kids Count to uh, basically turn the two lower decks of the tourable space into a haunted house for the evening. And uh, we've had this has been our first weekend uh, where it's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from seven o'clock until 10 30 i believe and it's been going pretty well so far i've only been able to attend one of them uh so far but uh, i've heard pretty good reviews so far so that's what we're doing now and that's kind of our last big event of the season uh and then we shut down uh i myself have been frantically running back and forth from the ship to our onshore office moving artifacts that can be damaged by cold weather to our uh, climate controlled office because well obviously unfortunately unlike you guys on the you guys at buffalo uh i don't have heating on my boat yet so <laughs> and just as an aside very quickly i also went to visit the buffalo naval park after uh the henza conference and i must say the work you guys are doing there is spectacular uh my dad was with me he tagged along and we were both extremely impressed with what you guys had there and i will say this the little rock which i'm wearing the hat of is the first museum ship where i'm walking through it and i realize i don't know which way is forward like every other museum ship i've been on i know which way is forward i know which way is aft i know which side is port and i know which side is starboard but I'm walking through a corridor on uh, Little Rock, and I just realized I've never been on a ship this big before, and I think I might be lost. <laughs> and I, I, cannot, I cannot imagine the work you guys have to put in to get her looking as good as she does and just have her in the condition she is. And I know we're all like this. We see our own ship. We see every single flaw. But... I was impressed and seeing probably eight to 10 guys working away on Sullivan's completely redoing an interior space. It made me feel good that yes, the Sullivan's can, and I believe will pull out of its crisis. And uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job there as far as I'm concerned. So I, I look forward to coming again in 2025. Yeah, they they're actually pulling it together. It, it's looking really good. So for those of you get, that get a chance to vi visit the Buffalo Naval Park, you'll see the work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you wanted to add, Connor? You know, winding down the uh, season. Uh, not too too much. I of course I will just say to any Canadian viewers who might be uh, attending, we all closed down for the winter. Every single one of Canada's museum ships closed for the winter. Support your local museum ship. If you have one in your area, uh, we just can't function like the guys on Kid can. It's just not <laughs> feasible. Uh, so support your local museum ship, whether it be buying from their online store, from their just sending a donation, or just following their social media if they have one. Because, and I, and I will say this for the Americans as well, uh, we're, we're always needing the support. So I really appreciate that. Uh, this year has been a challenging but very successful year for us. And we just can't wait to return in the second half of May 2024. Well, no, one thing I failed to mention, or I should mention, is that Connor Kilgore is also one of the administrators for the Museum okay. Ships Facebook group. So you definitely have to check out uh, the uh, the Facebook group Museum Ships uh, between 10 and 20 posts a day about Museum Ships. So Connor's absolutely right support the museum ships. I mean, obviously I, I always say one of the easiest and yet most effective ways to support a museum ship is check out their YouTube channel, yeah. watch their videos, give them views, become a subscriber. 
and support their comment, uh, their content, because if they reach a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, they can all of a sudden start generating revenue. And that is a definite, uh, uh, advantage. So when it comes to the USS Kid, the USS Slater, the Buffalo Naval Park, um, you know, of course, you can also check out Battleship, Mu uh, uh, Battleship New Jersey. That is a classic example of the way that you can grow an audience. So check out their YouTube channel, uh, check out their Facebook group, check out their website without a doubt. And when it comes to Connor, you can check out the uh, Alexander Henry on www.tmtb.ca that's tmtb.ca and you can uh, check out their website there as well you can also find us on facebook at the transportation museum of thunder bay it is the black and white logo got it all right guys before we wind this down anything else you wanted to add uh well, he muted himself again shane why do you keep muting yourself <laughs> <laughs> I, just tried to, I just tried to I just tried to unmute him. Come on. <laughs> uh, uh, He's saying thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. To thank somebody. You. Uh, all right. Thank you, Shane. To so Tim. He's saying thank you to Tim, I guess. Yeah, and we should thank definitely you. thank you. No, yeah, he's saying he's money. taking the thank you back. Okay, I'm taking it back then. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, Tim, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, Supervisor of the USS Kid. You can check out Tim at their YouTube channel, USS Kid Veterans Museum, and the website, USSKid.com. Thank you, Tim Nesmith, for joining us tonight. And remember, it's also the 80th uh, anniversary of the commissioning of the uh, Fletcher class destroyer. Um, USS the Sullivan. So definitely check out uh, their website, um, buffalonavalpark.org. Um, all right. So now that we interpreted what Shane was trying to say, um, is there anything else that uh, you guys wanted to add? Um, well, to just to the guy, Tony, who just said that if I'm ever on New Jersey, I'll get super lost. I'm sure I will. I, I plan to get down there someday. Oh, yeah, I would love to check out the uh, New Jersey as well. So, yeah. all right. Well, if there uh, isn't anything else, I will sign us off. My name is Ken from the YouTube channel History X. Thank you for joining us tonight. We will have a another episode of Museum Ship Mafia coming up in a couple of weeks. Like I said, we do that the second Wednesday of each month. So keep an eye out for that. For uh, John Epp, the USS Slater, Stephen Tedesco at the Buffalo Naval Park, uh, Shane Stevenson at the Buffalo Naval Park, and Connor Gilgore at the Alexander Henry. I will say uh, my name's Ken Stano from the YouTube channel History X. Thank you for joining us on a Saturday night, and everyone have a great evening. Good night. Yep. Good night.